Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster is finally here, and I've really struggled with this video. At first, it was obviously just going to be a review. I'm going to review the product of Nocturne HD. It's been out in Japan, I've been covering it for many months, and if you've been paying attention to the channel, I've talked about various aspects such as DLC, what do I recommend, how do I feel about the game being sold at $50 or $70 if you want the complete experience. And for this review, I kind of want to just tackle it a little bit differently than even some of my other reviews, I would say, because... You can't just review this game, in my opinion, as Nocturne, and ignoring the fact that it is a re-release of a game that is still very readily available on PlayStation 2 and 3 in terms of legal means kind of is a different conversation on its own. So for this video, I kind of wanted to do something different. Now, if any of you out there know me, I have always been a huge fan of HD remasters or HD collections. For the longest time, and especially during the PlayStation 3 generation, and even for the PlayStation 4 generation, I have just been a huge fan of re-releases to make things more accessible, maybe improve the visual qualities, just general quality of life features for the gameplay in general. Heck, just throw some trophies and achievements on there, and most of the time, I'm pretty happy. But Nocturne HD has just been such an interesting beast to tackle, because... Depending on who you ask, this game is a masterpiece and is one of the best JRPGs of all time and deserves your time and attention no matter what form it may take or how much money it costs. But for me, I have not touched this game in over a decade. It was one of my favorite games growing up back in the PlayStation 2 era, but after I beat it, it was never one that I went back to and just kind of casually dipped my toe in. I got the true demon ending, and for the most part, I haven't really touched the game since my first initial playthrough. So, after getting the chance to review this game for this video here, it was such an interesting premise of just, okay... Let's leave the baggage at the door, let's forget about the price for a second, let's forget about the DLC, and let's actually just play through this as a video game and talk about it as a HD re-release. And even though it is called HD Remaster, that is its own argument of how much work was actually done. And for any of those people out there who may not be aware, now while the original Nocturne was developed internally at Atlas Japan, this HD Remaster was handled by ITL, Imaginative Technology Land. It released in 2020 back in Japan and is now out for the rest of the world. And what a strange re-release this has been. From the announcement tied with Shin Megami Tensei 5 to the splitting up of content such as Dante, and even it's just release of finally coming out to Steam, being more accessible to so many players. It's just such an interesting title of like, I think if you told someone how much blood can you kind of squeeze from this stone that is, here is a over 15 year old JRPG that is being sold in 2021 for $50 at its cheapest price option possible. And I would think, well, you can maybe talk about it for a little bit, but it's just something that has been in my brain and digging at me for so long for so many reasons that it's kind of hard to really process it and sort of talk about. That's why this is definitely not going to be a more normal review in the sense of, hey, let's talk about the story. Let's talk about what did I think of the gameplay because I could talk about Nocturne any time, but this is a release is just so interesting as a HD remaster. Now, Comparing even recent releases of remasters in 2021, there are so many interesting cases of things big and small, of are you going the smaller, cheaper digital route, like releasing something like a Star Wars Republic Commando of a no-frills port, widescreen, add some achievements, there you go, or are you going on the EA and Bioware route of remastering something like Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 for $60 with almost all of its DLC in that one package? So I think Atlas has not done themselves any favor by putting this game out at $50 full price, but it also kind of then brings to this point of, okay, is the $50 price you're buying into for the classic JRPG Nocturne, or is it for the HD remaster? And for me, through this entire process, and even still now, I don't look at Nocturne HD as just Nocturne, but a modern version. I look at it as its own unique skew. 
It is a way that I can play through a classic PlayStation 2 RPG, but it's also offering me new things such as voice acting, uh, skill inheritance is now a manual choice, improved some visual features, but also changed in others and may not be everyone's cup of tea. And so many different aspects of this have just been so crazy in terms of tackling. Of There are so many things I can say I love about this game. I love the visuals. I think, at the end of the day, the artistic changes that they made to the lighting and some of the character models, and even the environments, are outstanding. Moments of this game look like a work of art. But I would also be ignorant to ignore the first scene in this game that it shows you with direct control looks absolutely hideous. When you are seeing the subway station, it is not a good looking subway, it's very minimal. There are no walking around characters. You'll be lucky to have more than five characters to interact with in a single area. This is a very lonely world, and yes, it's lonely by design, in terms of the apocalypse is coming up, and you're in this alone, desolate, new strange world that once was your home, but I think what's so interesting about that is looking at something like Nocturne with a modern eye, it's got a lot of blemishes that I just kind of always chalked up to, oh, that's part of its charm. And while I love the way the characters look and I love the way the demons are designed and I think so many aspects like that are so fun and still hold up in a timeless way, other things don't. Like... Aspects of the game, such as character development, I was surprisingly finding myself kind of disappointed by, in a sense of, I don't think it was bad to have as little screen time for the main character's friends or the antagonists of the story. I think characters such as Chiaki or Hijiri and even people like Hikawa, I enjoy their screen time, but it is so few and far between, and it just left me longing in such a way that I never felt with my original release of I took it as it is of if a game especially JRPGs if your name wasn't Final Fantasy I'm not expecting every character to be kind of fleshed out and explaining their thoughts wants needs and desires but playing through this now in 2021 it's got such an amazing wrapper but the candy that's inside while not stale has definitely lost some of its flavor and that's Obviously, just due to comparing it to modern games might not be the most fair, but still, if you're coming at this for the first time, even, it's not like you're going to be playing this game. There's not a splash screen in the beginning saying, hey, this is a PlayStation 2 game from 2003, so cut us some slack in a few places. No, this is being sold as a brand new video game, even though it has HD remaster in there. I am sure that more people will be playing this HD remaster than the original ever did. So while I love the conceit of the world of trying to find a reason or following along other people, summoning gods, reincarnating the world, starting over again, why are you doing what you're doing? Setups like that are incredible in Nocturne and still are to this day. But there are just so many moments where I find myself asking, well, why? Why can this character do this? Why does this character want to do this? Why did we feel no need to explain about any of this? Why are these human characters able to survive while I am part human, part demon, and I'm barely making it through each encounter just trying to make it across this new land? So many little things like that just kind of added up and definitely never detracted from the story, but kind of made me think about what would it have been like if we really sort of honed in on the story even more with a bit of a more modern budget. I don't think this is definitely a game that needs remade. I think this would be a very expensive game to get remade, but definitely had me thinking about a lot of aspects. Now, that being said, I really, really appreciated the voice acting. The voice acting is new to both the Japanese version and the Western version. There's English voice acting for the very first time, and almost all of the voice cast I thought was very fitting for the humans. The demons were a little bit more spotty, but that kind of gets into my biggest complaint with the voice acting. While it's great that voice acting is a brand new feature for this re-release, this feels like what the game was meant to have originally. And I don't mean that in a sense of, oh, the game always should have had voice acting. I think the original Nocturne is a silent game for the most part is still fantastic. And I'm more talking about this felt like the voice acting budget was that of a PlayStation 2 game. There are long moments 
where nothing is voice acted. If you are getting new characters introduced, you are rarely hearing them actually voice acted. You, when you're going through the credits of the game, you see a basically scattering of people who are the voice actors for a handful of characters, demons, and whatnot, but there are just dozens upon dozens of main characters in my mind that I thought should have been voiced. I thought more, I thought, why not voice all of the mannequins? Why not have each of the demon negotiations actually be a conversation? And stuff like that really kind of was a bit of a nitpick that just kept scratching at the back of my head of like, Nocturne is not a game with a ton of story. This is not something that would take 200 plus hours of recording time. This is something that on a fair and understandable budget could probably have happened and I just don't really see why they didn't outside of wanting to try and save some money and really only recording kind of what you want like the really only surprising parts of the game that really got me like oh that's interesting that all of this is voiced would be the fiend battles but even that is just such a small sliver of what is a very large cast in terms of the story, even though there are so few main characters in the long run. When you choose to only show a couple of bosses or a couple of main players in this story as worthy of voice acting, you just kind of turn your brain off to it for such long periods of time that you could almost forget that this game does have voice acting. Yes, there's new sounds and there's new aspects for it like that, but... I just cannot stress enough, I think, if the entire game was voiced from beginning to end and there was no scenes that are just text only, it would have increased the enjoyment of the story, for me at least, tenfold. So, getting a little bit more into the gameplay, Nocturne plays just as good as it ever did in terms of just your battle system. It is very clean presentation nice kind of battle menus nothing is too distracting most things make sense there are obviously some aspects that people might not always be used to in the sense of oh hey if i want to do this you're only going to be able to use items with your main character or even little things like hey if your main character dies it's game over not everyone's going to be kind of used to that especially in modern day rpgs but these are just kind of classic tropes you have to get used to negotiating with demons to either get items or have them join your party might seem obtuse at first and even random in bits but you'll slowly come to learn that even if you're doing everything right and a demon leaves you that's just part of the experience and i'm really glad that kept its charm and the battle system for my over 50 hour playthrough was just as fun from my first hilarious demi fiend punch all the way to my last one in god's face I was so glad how well the battle system held up, and it is really what kept me coming back. I love the loop and the feedback the game gives you, no matter what difficulty you're playing on, in terms of whatever actions and whatever time you are putting into this world has meaningful consequences, but at the same time, this game will not flinch in the slightest to punish you if you forget to respect its rules and play accordingly. Now that being said, while I did appreciate a lot of the gameplay still after all of these years, the technical aspects of it still felt like it was dragging me down a little bit. I thought that it was great to be able to play the game in widescreen, but why were there situations of various pre-rendered cutscenes looking not even laughably bad, embarrassingly bad. There were moments of this game where it would transition from gameplay to pre-rendered cutscene and it was so jarring, I've actually, like, felt myself, like, kind of cringing in the face in sense of, like, oh my gosh, this, like, looks really bad. And this was something that it's like, could they have fixed this? Yes. Was this clearly a project that was going to get the love, care, and attention that all of the fans wanted? Unfortunately, no. Hence why you have other aspects, like... People might look at the soundtrack and go, oh, why is the audio quality so low for certain aspects or certain songs? The sad reality of it is this. The developer was not given the source code. The developer had basically a master disc to work from and were basically able to do the best that they could with it. But at the end of the day, if Atlas is not going to provide these master source files and if they're not going to come out and say, we just don't have them anymore, the excuse kind of stops at them. Yes, the developer is the one making the product, but when they are not an internal Atlas studio, we shouldn't look at the developers and call them lazy because something is still in 4x3 or something has compressed audio. We should be going, hey, you have this somewhere, and if you don't, you can just tell us because no one's going to light up the pitchforks and torches 
if we just have a simple answer. And I think it's just such a shame that a lot of the most common complaints I see for the technical aspect of Nocturne HD has just been left to kind of sit in its corner and hope that it eventually kind of dies down. The frame rate being capped at 30 along with max resolution really only topping out at 1080p I think is a great example of that in the sense of like yeah it's a JRPG you don't need it to be running at 60 or even something like 120 frames but tell me why then. Tell me if this needed to be artistic intent for a reason. Don't just let people stew on an idea and have an idea kind of snowball into a reasoning because not everyone's going to have the same thought. And then for resolution, obviously there are hundreds of textures in this game that look absolutely atrocious by 2021 standards in 1080p. But why not just still let people bump up the resolution. We are now in a time where 4K monitors are more prevalent than ever, so if that is an option on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, PlayStation 5, and PC, why not offer it there? It just makes it look like the Switch was the base unit hardware, and if it's like, okay, this version runs on Switch, let's ship it out, 30 frames per second, 720p, 1080p max, let's get it out the door. When you don't have reasons for that, it just makes it look lazy. And I know the people who worked on this legitimately care. It was a very small team of less than 20 people at ITL made this game happen. And Nocturne HD, for all of its warts, is still a really awesome game. But every time I feel like I have to warn people about it. Like I shouldn't have to have all these red flags like you're some really great first date but you've just got a couple of weird warning signs I have to warn my friends about. And that just really hurts. It's something that almost kind of taints it for the time being of whether these patches maybe eventually fix it, which I honestly don't expect to happen. The game has been out for months in Japan, and while we have gotten one major set of patches and fixes, for the most part, the game still has various technical issues I never expect to get fixed. There are issues with some of the achievements and trophies just not popping under certain circumstances. There are issues of the screen flickering every time you are interacting with items or talking to certain NPCs. I am playing a game that I paid 50 or even up to $70 for. Why is your screen flickering black every 15 seconds when I'm just collecting an item? This is not something that is that taxing. You made a PlayStation 2 emulator in a Unity wrapper and you put it on consoles. I'm not saying you should have done more. All I'm saying is the bar is pretty low in terms of what people are realistically wanting in terms of playing a modern day version of a PlayStation 2 game. If there was even ever a chance of anyone out there with a chance to fixing things listening to this video, I would say outside of just making it more technically sound, getting rid of a couple of crashes every now and then on a couple of other systems, making soft locks a lot less of a common thing, other aspects of like, why isn't this an equal experience on consoles and PC? Right now in the West, if you want to play the original version of Nocturne, not just the version with Raido and not just the version with Dante, you can only do that on computers. Now, there's no technical reason why that can't also come to consoles, but because it's just not something people are really asking about, going back to the fixes or the answers as to why is X the problem in this game or why is Y the reason it's like this, it just goes back to this whole thing of we basically are looking at Nocturne for the most part. And I mean, obviously everyone's going to be different, but I feel like the general consensus for this game has been we ported you one of our most nostalgic RPGs of all time. And if you don't buy it, then that's on you. And I just would like for more of the discussion to be less pointing the finger of saying, oh, this is your fault. This is your fault. We should just be like, isn't it fair to expect parody? Isn't it fair to expect equal content across all platforms if it's technically feasible why not do it they're all running in the same engine there's nothing theoretically stopping anyone from having all versions of nocturne on one hd port there's nothing stopping from having an arranged soundtrack if you want to have things sounding nicer it's just all the thing of if there is something stopping it it would be nice to know but at no point while playing this game did i hit that wall of just going oh okay this is why it can't be done, or this is why it can't be fixed. It always just felt like half measures were taken. Steps were skipped. 
people were cutting corners just to get this done maybe faster. I don't know if this didn't like have a full development time. I don't know if this was a rush job. It is definitely weird for an Atlas game to get this many patches, but it, that just goes to the beaten housewife syndrome in all Atlas fans that we are here months after the Japanese launch with the Western one, and Japan is still getting patches along with us, and that's weird. That shouldn't be weird. We should expect if the game is not up to standards or qualities that either the developer or the customer would like that it can just get fixed because it's technically possible not just oh we've already dumped enough money into it so it's not worth it anymore one last thing i would like to say in terms of the kind of interesting nature this hd remaster has is the narrative that this should be the catalyst that starts all atlas remasters for smt if we all support this, if we rally together, if we buy three copies each and get the deluxe edition to play early, we can get Rido games on modern systems. We can get Digital Devil Saga on modern systems. It's going to mean more ports for everyone and everyone's happy, so we just got to bite the bullet and fund these things ourselves. I don't, I don't think that's the case, because then, at the end of the day, if that's the message you want to send... That's saying, I'm fine buying a product that clearly had corners cut, and I want you to sell that to me more and more with other beloved RPGs. And I don't think that's a message you want. I don't think that's a message Atlas should hope to want. And I hope, at the very least, videos like this or opinions don't come across as just some weird guy complaining in his room at 11 o'clock at night, and more just comes across as... A fan of the medium, a fan of something of, I want this to be, like, my dream Nocturne HD would not just be, oh, it's all of the DLC in one cart for like 40 bucks and there's no patches. It would be, let's make this a celebration. Where's the lineage? Where's the remembering of the, like, original dev team who poured blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. There are documentaries about this. There are hundreds of amazing art pieces around this series, and even aspects of, like, that there are legitimate members of the original Nocturne development team who are just not in this as credits at all is truly disgusting to me. I think not properly crediting people from the original dev team in a HD remaster that is, for the most part, still that original base game is downright disrespectful. And it just goes to show, like, little aspects of, like, I don't think the people who did that did it on purpose. I at least would hope not. But other aspects of, like, it would be very easy to earn brownie points. And the brownie points they could earn are even just little things like, hey, throw in the debug menu from the original PlayStation 2 release. It'd be fun to show people extras. It'd be fun to have anything extra. It would be fun to be able to do the Puzzle Boy minigame at any time and not just have to start up a playthrough and hopefully rush through and get there within 15 hours. There are so many ways to win with the HD collection, quote-unquote, win, when I say that, of just, here's some art, here's some interviews, here's something of, we are remembering the legacy of this title. This is an important title. This is a big moment in not only this series, but our franchise and our lineage as a company. And Nocturne is such an important release that to see myself have to falter, even for a second, to recommend this to someone for factors that have nothing to do with the base game. That base game is still fantastic. That base game is still an amazing RPG that is unlike almost anything out there. And even for some of the warts and all that might be in the original Nocturne release, there is nothing I would really change about it for the major. Yeah, there may be some puzzles that feel outdated by today's standard. There may be moments where you feel like you're just bashing your head against a wall to get through a moment, but that's part of the experience. The Nocturne experience is still here in HD. It's just surrounded by what almost feels like this miasma of, oh, but wait, well, what ifs and why nots? And it's just a very disappointing aspect for me of this is a great game. And guess what? If you're playing this for the first time, all I've really done is say, hey, you're going to enjoy this game or you probably enjoyed this game. I enjoyed playing this game, too. I had a great I would not have paid. I would not have paid money for this game, let alone I would not have sunk 50 hours into my life to do a playthrough for this video if I did not enjoy playing it. It just goes back to the whole thing of you could have gotten something so much better. You are playing a product that is a fantastic JRPG at the end of the day. 
Nothing can change that. Nocturne is a fantastic JRPG. But at the end of the day, it is almost cursed by adding the HD remaster on the title. I think if they just called this Shin Megami Tensei 3, threw it on consoles, still it's the same port. When you're putting that moniker on there, the audience is expecting and the potential customers are hopefully expecting a entry that is going to be the definition of this is the way to experience this title. There is no reason outside of maybe for historical or archival purposes that I would have to tell people, oh, but hold on to your PlayStation 2 copies. Oh, check out this and make sure that uh, you know what you're getting into before. It should be as simple as, oh, you like modern Atlas RPGs? Well, check out Nocturne HD. It's a really fun time and it's on modern platforms. Jump in have fun. Look at Persona 4 Golden. When Persona 4 Golden came to PC, were there technical issues? Of course there were technical issues. But guess what? It was just sold as Persona 4 Golden. People were just glad to be playing this on a new system. They were glad to be seeing new people come to the series and talk about this franchise that people love so much. And it just makes me so... not sad or even mad, but just disappointed that Nocturne couldn't get that release and i don't think nocturne hd is ever going to get to that point it's never going to have its moment not even because it's smt and not persona but just because of the messiness that surrounded the whole situation so at the end of the day obviously this is a game if you are a fan of nocturne you know you're going to play this or if you're not going to play this you know if you want to support this kind of business move in development with atlas that is your decision to make at the end of the day. All I can do and all I've ever tried to do with this title and with any game I cover on this channel is to be as informative as possible while also being as clear, transparent, and open as possible. Do people have questions about it? I want to help let them know. Are there things I think people should know before dropping 50 or 70 bucks? I also want to make that as clear as humanly possible. So, at the end of the day, Nocturne, I am so glad you are now on more PlayStation systems, Nintendo Switch, and even Steam. Being on computers is such a great thing for this series and should have happened so much longer, and I'm glad that it's happening. I just wish I felt more confident recommending you at full price. Trust me, when this thing starts getting discounted, when it is $30, when it is $25, I will be preaching and letting everyone in the world know that this fantastic game is on the cheap pick it up and i really hope it has a second wind i hope when the prices start going down and it's a lot more at that impulse buy price or it, it finds a slow time during a steam summer sales or people start picking it up and maybe talking about it and streaming it more i really hope it has that second life but i just know the japanese launch was not going to be that moment and unfortunately the western launch wasn't either Thank you all so much for listening and watching this video. I know it goes all over the place, but I just kind of had to sort of express myself in this in such a weird way of like, I wouldn't call this a review. I wouldn't call this, here is me giving this game a blank out of 10 score. This is clearly someone who is a massive fan of the franchise. I love Shin Megami Tensei. I would hope so if I'm doing a weekly podcast about it every Tuesday, but this is also coming from someone who loves video games. I love preserving history. I love HD collections. I love giving new people new opportunities to play classic titles as best and conveniently as possible. I just wish I loved Nocturne HD as much as I know a hypothetical Nocturne HD could have been. Either way, let me know what you think, not only of this video, but of Nocturne HD in the comments below. I really want to know what you all think. Let me know what you're playing it on. Let me know if you are holding off on the price. Are you just not picking this up at all? I want to know everything about this. Let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me. Once again, thank you so much to Atlas West for getting me a review code. I really, really appreciated getting the review code, especially in terms of giving me a bit of a leg up in terms of getting this video out to you all as soon as humanly possible. Either way, I am sure I will still be talking about all things Shin Megami Tensei and even Nocturne HD more. So if you enjoyed this video and want to help my channel keep growing and more people finding out about it, I really appreciate anyone who can like the video, subscribe to the channel, even just share 
sharing it really, really means the world to me. Either way, thank you all just so much once again for if you actually did make it all the way to the end of this video for sticking through, listening to it, giving your opinions, or just listening to me rant and rave and give my opinions. I hope it made sense. I hope you all have a good rest of your day, and I will see you all later. Have a good one.